Okay, this video is what are the most common mitochondrial inhibitors, things that inhibit your mitochondria energy production factory. And I'll find I find this pretty funny because because a lot of people are exposed to these quite commonly. Um, I'll take my picture off of here. It'll be easier to see all this stuff. Okay, so basically the most important one to know first of all is fat, especially saturated fat inhibits complex three. By the way, this is the inner mitochondrial membrane where the vast majority of energy is produced in humans. And um, it's like a fireman bucket brigade. They hand electrons down from the least uh, powerful electron grabber to the most powerful electron grabber. Okay. And then uh, oxygen is the ultimate electron acceptor. And it gets converted into water. Okay. And this produces a, a proton gradient. Complex one, complex three, and complex four, they all pump protons into intermembranous space. There's actually an outer mitochondrial membrane located here, and these protons accumulate in this space. And then uh, complex five is ATP synthase, and it harvests the gradient, allowing a proton to re-enter the mitochondrial matrix. And the energy provided by that is coupled to adding a phosphate to ADP, adenosine triphosphate, to make ATP adenosine triphosphate okay and that's like the twenty dollar bill for getting things done inside a cell that is the energy uh, source for making things happen inside a cell okay so why do I find this funny because you'll be amazed at how commonly people are uh, exposed to this stuff okay so first of all uh, dietary fat especially sad fat inhibits complex three and that causes insulin resistance that causes diabetes that's the main cause of diabetes right there <laughs> okay and then what also is a mechanism to cause cancer to inhibit mitochondrial electron transport like deprive it of oxygen if you deprive it of like 35 percent or more of its oxygen this is called the warburg effect you know he won the nobel prize in 1931 the german biochemist some of the cells will die gradually going to apoptosis program cell death if it were complete deprivation of oxygen they would die immediately that'd be necrosis where everything is just a big mess whereas program cell death apoptosis is gradual the cell can be recycled so to speak all right, but the relevance is that the same overall mechanism, a very similar mechanism to cause diabetes, can also cause cancer. That's bad. All right, and you need energy to exercise, to think effectively. All right, and what you're always going to hear is, well, this only inhibits mitochondria a little bit. This only inhibits mitochondria a little bit. Well, these things add up, okay? Like, um, you know, just today I was talking to a lady. She's uh, taking metformin for her diabetes. <laughs> She asked me if that was a good idea. I said, well, you know, you can do whatever you want. I wouldn't do it. Isn't that great? The treatment for diabetes inhibits mitochondrial electron transport, which is what causes diabetes. Brilliant. Okay. Why not just avoid dietary fat? You know, there's a good paper by a guy named Roy Taylor. Roy Taylor is sort of a real famous diabetes doctor and researcher from United Kingdom. He actually worked with Gerald Shulman. So he's got a good video on the internet. You could watch that pretty easily. Just type in Roy Taylor, you know, dietary treatment of uh, type 2 diabetes. And he had incredibly good results. Tons of his patients were reversing their type 2 diabetes. Okay, so anyways, that's my point. You can reverse type 2 diabetes before you're insulin dependent in most people. So why not do it? <laughs> rather than be taking this pill which inhibits your mitochondria, okay? And I've had a lot of doctors ask me, oh, I heard metformin is so good and it's, you know, it's good for aging. I'm like, yeah, right, you know, cause of aging. You know, the mitochondrial oxidative stress theory is damage the mitochondria. So and then you're going to damage mitochondria and, and improve aging by that? I doubt it. Okay, um, this gets more entertaining. Trust me, you're going to have a good laugh. There's this, this is funny, okay? Lots of people think they're smart taking Tylenol for their pain. Tylenol is a mitochondria inhibitor. Inhibits complex three. Um, so I wouldn't consider that a very intelligent thing to do. You know, a lot of people say, well, this is one thing where I disagree with a lot of the famous nutrition experts. They think it's no big deal to have uh, non-organic food. You know what? I think it is a big deal. And here's some reasons why. Atrazine, which is super estrogenic, the one that turns male frogs into female frogs, atrazine inhibits complex three. That's the one that gets sprayed on corn all the time, uh, also on golf courses. All right, well, anyways, uh, so you not only get feminized, <laughs> you also get your mitochondrial inhibited, lowers your energy level. Great. Glyphosate, glyphophosphate, that's the one that's spread on soy. All these people think soy is good for them. Yeah, right. Okay, here's just one more problem to add to it. It's 
you know, truckload of problems, all right? So glyphosate inhibits complex two of uh, mitochondrial electron transport. Great, isn't that wonderful? Okay, so if you're eating non-organic food, let's say you eat the typical processed food. It's made with uh, GMO corn sprayed with atrazine, made with GMO soy as a protein source spread with uh, glyphosate. Bing, bing, there's two mitochondrial inhibitors right there. Okay, also the typical fat stupid person takes statins to lower their cholesterol. Brilliant, inhibits co coenzyme Q, electron transport. Brilliant. I could just see him eating non-organic food, taking a coenzyme Q statin and their metformin, all of this stuff inhibiting their mitochondria. You know, and I'm going to bet you that's going to increase their risk of diabetes. It's going to increase their risk of um, cancer. I'm going to predict. I don't have a study to, to show that, but I got a clear cut mechanism here. And it ain't going to make them smarter having less energy for their brain. Okay. Um, heavy metal contaminants. For example, mercury is a common contaminant of high fructose corn syrup inhibits complex one great okay um trust me this is going to continue to get funnier uh what are other things oh some people say oh it's no big deal to take cyanocobalamin type b12 no i think it's stupid and what they're going to tell you is oh well there's not that much cyanide in it there's a little bit but there's not that much all this stuff adds up, okay? I think it'd be stupid. By the way, my mechanism here, it might be cytochrome oxidase instead of cytochrome C, but they're right next to each other. So for our purposes, this is good enough. It's difficult to change this graph now that I got so much stuff on here, so much clutter. But anyways, cyanocobalamin contains cyanide. Not, good, not a good idea. You're much better off, in my opinion, with methylcobalamin. Okay, guess what also has cyanide? Almonds. <laughs> I've had a lot of people tell me, though, they think almonds are good for you. Yeah, right. Yeah, have some almond milk. Great. With carrageenan and a carcinogen often in it. I wouldn't drink that stuff. Anyways, that's, uh, so this stuff adds up. So other geniuses think that they should be eating flax. And I think that's funny. You know, Americans are so stupid. I'm going to have some flax, super estrogenic, and it's got cyanide in it. Yeah, that'll energize you. Feminize yourself and eat cyanide. Brilliant. Okay. So you can, you, know, you can see how this could add up. You could have some people potentially eating flax because they think it's good for them, estrogenic and containing cyanide, and then having almonds, which they think are good for them. Estro you know, I don't know about estrogenic, just you know, it's got cyanide, some cyanide in it. And then this new coating that they're putting on the fruit right here, take a look at that one. That's potentially got um, acetonitrile, you know, methyl cyanide. Wonderful. Okay, the real cyanide inhibits this cytochrome oxidizer, cytochrome C. I got to look that back up, but you get the drift. They're right next to each other. Good enough. Okay, uh, what else? Lead is a common uh, pollutant in a lot of things. Um, Hydroxynonanol is made from omega-6 fat, so that's not a good idea. That's the one that Tetsumori Yamashima wrote about the Japanese people becoming fat and demented, which he felt was because of the increased omega-6 oils in their diet. Um, by the way, olive oil will often contain omega-6 oils, okay? It's not just MUFAs, mono, monounsaturated fats. It also contains saturated fat, you know, about 12 to 14%, and it'll contain omega-6 oils in it a lot of times. Okay, what else? A lot of these food dyes and processed food are mitochondrial inhibitors. A lot of preservatives are antifungals. Well, guess what? They inhibit complex too, okay? Great. That's another reason why I don't like non-organic food. That's why I don't like processed food. Uh, titanium dioxide nanoparticles, which can be in sunscreens and it can be in foods, it can be in medications, it's a whitener agent. I wouldn't want that stuff. Um, other things on here, cadmium, like from brake pads from cars. That's why I won't sit in some sidewalk cafe. People invite me. Don't you want to sit at the sidewalk cafe right next to all those cars stopped at a stoplight, inhaling all their diesel fuel, which is a brain toxin, neurotoxin, and then the cadmium from the brake pads? No, thank you. Um, you know, let's see, what else? Aminoglycoside antibiotics, okay, those are not as commonly used, but fluoroquinolones are used all the time. The fluoride's neurotoxic. Fluoride, by the way, inhibits complex four. I see these poor, stupid ladies, you know, walking around with their bottle of water trying to lose weight, and I'm like, you know, drinking water is not your problem, okay? <laughs> Eat starches, all right? But, you know, look, it's a brain toxin. It's a mitochondrial inhibitor, this F- minus stuff, Okay. All right, fluoroquinolones are brain toxic. A lot of times they put fluoride onto brain medications like psychiatric meds. Well, I forgot to include psych meds in here. I'll bet you some of them are mitochondrial inhibitors. I don't know that for sure, but I'll just bet you just on, they got F- in them. That's one way they can do it. POFAs, you know, cooking on those nonstick, uh, you know, uh, cookware would probably have that. Beta-lactam antibiotics, 
Okay, they like fluoroquinolones, get increased traversal of the blood-brain barrier. Well, guess what? Things that have increased traversal of the blood-brain barrier also tend to have increased traversal of the testicles, okay, and the ovaries, okay, great. Inhibiting the mitochondria and your gonads. All right, tetracycline antibiotics, you know, how many kids take that for their acne, okay? I actually took that for a little while when I was a kid. I didn't know any better. I was young and ignorant, and so were my parents, okay? Beta blockers inhibit uh, mitochondrial function, great. Um, excessive amounts of copper, iron, zinc, aluminum, all are toxic to mitochondria. Okay, uh, what else do we got in here? Um, propofol, real commonly used um, sedative in medical purposes. I wouldn't let anybody give that to me. Isofluorine, another anesthetic. You know, and I like this the way this fat is slowing down the energy production in the brain. Great. That's another reason why I don't want to eat a high fat diet. And I think high fat diets are stupid. Okay, watch out for the heavy metals in welding, you know, and some things in mining, manganese, it's not a good thing for your brain. I never go to dry cleaning, you know, trichloroethylene, okay, or carbon tetrachloride, you know, mitochondrial and toxic. Um, I would never use liquid paper. A lot of people think they're smart using liquid paper. It's stupid, okay? A lot of times things that, have, that are volatile, the transition from liquid to solid rapidly give off volatile organic compounds. They're potentially circa inhibitors or mitochondrial toxins. You know, excitotoxins, circotoxins, um, and mitochondrial toxins, you all end up in a final common pathway of excitotoxicity at risk for uh, brain cell death, you know, neuron apoptosis. And the hippocampus, our memory center, is one of the most sensitive places, so you don't want to mess with that. Okay, then these are some other things like, you know, Paraquat was often an MJ, Rotenone is another pesticide, herbicide. So anyways, uh, oh, here, what else? These anti-seizure medications, okay? Those are potentially dangerous. All three of these are anti-seizure medications. Zonisamide, Valproic acid, topiramate. So, you know, they slow you down. I've heard, you know, they all lower IQ. You know, maybe you, somebody might need them, but if you can avoid them, that would be nice. So anyways, I just want to give you the point that, you know, people are getting nickel and dimed to death because all these things are adding up. So avoid them as much as you can. Filter your water, reverse osmosis or distillation, or just move somewhere where you don't have F- in your water. Eat organic to avoid atrazine and GP, okay? Fix your cholesterol level by your diet so you don't need to take these statins, okay? Don't eat anything with high fructose corn syrup. Avoid all these processed food with all their preservatives. Don't go polypharmacy, you know, if you can avoid it. Anyways, hope that was helpful.